This video is going to take a look at what we did in our previous video with second ordered differential equations and expand that theory to higher ordered differential equations. So the question we're going to start off with today is how do we extend our theory to higher ordered linear equations. And so first let's look at what we mean by higher ordered differential equations. Basically what we're talking about is differential equations of the form some derivative of y, maybe it's the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, plus a function of just x times a derivative of y that's one less than the previous. And we're going to continue that pattern all the way down to another function of x times y's first derivative plus another function of x times y, and what we're going to look at right now is specifically the homogeneous case where it equals 0. When it has this general form, it is going to have a, what we're going to call the general, or often we'll call it the complementary, solutions. of y complement is equal to some constant times a first function plus another constant times a second function plus a third, a fourth, and a fifth, and actually we're going to have one constant times one function for every derivative of y. And what's important here is we're going to say that y1, y2, y3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to yn must be linearly independent. So if they're going to have to be linearly independent, we need to make sure we can verify that functions are linearly independent, which leads us to the Ronskian. of larger matrices. We're going to say the Ronskian of, we're just going to look at a 3 by 3, where we're dealing with third derivatives. How we're going to define the Ronskian of a 3 by 3 is it's still going to be a determinant, but this time because we have three functions, we're going to call them f, g, and h, we're going to need to do two additional rows, one for f prime, g prime, and h prime, and another row for f double prime, g double prime, h double prime. And that Ronskian is not equal to zero if and only if f, g, and h are linearly independent. So let's take a look at how we can actually calculate a 3 by 3 determinant. Let's say we have the determinant of, let's just call it A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Now for those of you that haven't taken linear algebra, a shortcut we can do for a 3 by 3 determinant is we can repeat the first and second columns off to the side, A, B, D, E, and G, H. And then we're going to take a look at the diagonals, and we're going to multiply the diagonal, A, E, I, and we'll add the diagonal next to it, B, F, G, and we'll add the diagonal next to it, C, D, H. Then we'll go back and we'll take the opposite diagonals, 
And these opposite diagonals are going to get subtracted. So we'll subtract GEC. We'll subtract HFC. And we'll subtract IDB. And then when all of that gets put together, that is the determinant of our 3 by 3 matrix. So with that in mind, let's show the functions e to the negative 3x, cosine of 2x, and sine of 2x are linearly independent. Well, to do that, we're going to set up our Ronskian with the functions e to the negative 3x, cosine of 2x, and sine of 2x. Each row, then, is going to be the derivative. So the first derivative is negative 3 e to the negative 3x. For the cosine, it's the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so negative 2 sine of 2x. And the derivative of sine is 2 cosine 2x. The next row is going to be the second derivative, which is positive 9 e to the negative 3x, negative 4 cosine of 2x, and negative 4 sine of 2x. And that is the determinant we're going to calculate. And we're going to do that by repeating the first column and the second column off to the side. And then we're going to add together all of those diagonals. If it's equal to 0, they're dependent. If it's equal to anything else, they're linearly independent. So our first diagonal gives us 2 times 4 is 8, e to the negative 3x sine squared of 2x. Our next diagonal gives us 9 times 2 is 18 e to the negative 3x cosine squared of 2x. And our next diagonal gives us positive 12 e to the negative 3x sine 2x cosine 2x. Working the other diagonals, then, we're going to be subtracting. So our first diagonal is going to be a sine squared. So I'm just going to line up like terms. We're subtracting. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. So it's positive 18 e to the negative 3x sine squared of 2x. The next diagonal, we're subtracting, because we're going the other way. Negative 4 times 2 is positive 8. e to the negative 3x cosine squared of 2x. And then our last diagonal, again, we're subtracting. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12 e to the negative 3x sine 2x cosine 2x. And when we add these together, we end up with 24 e to the negative 3x sine squared 2x. Oops, not 24, 26, sorry. Plus 26 e to the negative 3x cosine squared of 2x. And this stuff on the right all goes to 0. 
And if I factor out 26e to the negative 3x, we're left with sine squared 2x plus cosine squared of 2x, which is our favorite trig identity. That equals 1. So our determinant, or the Ronskian, comes out to be 26e to the negative 3x, which we know is not equal to 0. And because it's not equal to 0, we know, therefore, these three functions are linearly independent. Now, we want to do a lot more than just show functions are linearly independent. We want to find linearly independent general solutions of our non-homogeneous equations. We're trying to solve these linear differential equations. Well, first to set this up, a little bit of vocabulary. We had this function we were talking about, the nth derivative of y plus some function of x times the n minus 1 derivative of y plus another function plus another function until we get to some function of x times y's first derivative plus some function of x times y. And this time we're going to look at the non-homogeneous situation where it's equal to some other function of x. Now we've already talked about the complementary solution. The complementary solution we call y sub c, or y complement, and it is the solution to the homogeneous equation. In other words, it is when f of x is equal to 0. A complementary solution is that solution to the homogeneous equation. And that one's easier to find than what we're going to call the particular solutions. And with the particular solution, we're going to call it y sub p. A particular solution is a solution. to the differential equation. And the way we're going to solve these non-homogeneous equations is we're going to ultimately be looking for the general solution. The general solution is going to be y equals y's complement plus y particular. Those of you that have taken linear algebra, y complement spans the null space of our solution set. And y particular moves us or shifts us, it's a linear transformation, to the specific set of solutions that satisfy the f of x equation. So let's take a look at an example where we can see this happen. We're going to mainly look at seeing it happen rather than find solutions right now. That's going to be saved for another video as it's going to be a little bit more of a complex process. But for now, we're going to show First, that y particular is equal to negative 3x is a particular solution to 
to the differential equation y prime prime minus 4y equals 12x. And we're going to find a general solution. If, and we're going to give us some initial values, y sub 0 is equal to 3, and y prime sub 0 is equal to negative 7. First part of that request was to show that y particular was a solution to our differential equation. Well, y particular was negative 3x. We've got a second derivative in this function, so let's find the first two derivatives. The first derivative is negative 3, and the second derivative is equal to 0. So if we plug that into the function, y prime prime minus 4y equals 12x, y prime prime is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 3x, and sure enough, if we evaluate that, we get 12x which is the solution we wanted. So we've shown that the particular solution, negative 3x, is actually a particular solution. To get the general solution, so we need to find y sub c for our function y prime prime minus 4y equals 0. Well, we've already solved these types of problems in our previous video. This is only a second order differential equation, which means we can replace y prime prime with d squared minus 4. Regular y just goes away equals 0. And I can factor this to d plus 2, d minus 2 equals 0. So we know d is equal to negative 2 and positive 2. And then this tells me that the complementary solution is equal to the first constant times e to the negative 2x plus the second constant times e to the 2x. So, if we put this together, we end up with our general solution of y is equal to our complementary solution c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 e to the 2x plus the particular solution, and we were given the particular solution is negative 3x. So I'm going to change that to minus 3x, and now we have a general solution. Actually, we're going to do a little bit more with this because we also know some initial values. And so let's calculate those initial values. First, we're going to need the derivative, because we know y prime of 0 is negative 7. So the first derivative is negative 2c1 e to the negative 2x plus 2c2 e to the 2x minus 3. And then when we plug these values in, we plug 0 into y, or sorry, we plug 0 into x into the y function, and we get 3. So we know 3 is equal to c1, e to the 0 is 1, plus c2, e to the 0 is 1, minus 3 times 0, so we've got one function. Plugging 0 into the y prime, we get negative 7, so negative 7 is equal to negative 2 c1, e to the 0 plus 2c2 e to the 0 minus 3. And I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides, giving us negative 4 equals negative 2c1 plus 2c2. Divide by 2, and I get negative 2 equals negative c1 plus c2. And I'm going to have to buy a little bit more space. Bringing back that first function, 3 is equal to c1 plus c2. I can add those together. 
and that gives me 1 is equal to 2 C2s, or C2 is equal to 1 half. And if C2 is 1 half, C1 must be 5 halves. And then I get that by plugging it into either of the other two functions. And so now going back to my pink solution up here, my general solution is y equals c1, which I now know is 5 halves, e to the negative 2x, plus c2, which I know is 1 half, e to the 2x, minus 3x. And we have our general solution to the differential equation y prime prime minus 4y equals 12x. Okay, it's your turn to practice some of these. We're practicing with some of the vocabulary, the Ronskians, linearly independence, but also getting this general solution for y, where we take y complement and we add y particular. Take a look at practicing these. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you in class.